This is Ben working teen. I'm getting a chance to sit down with Jared Oldenburg, all the way from Colorado, speaking at Men of His Word Conference. Jared, thanks for stopping by today. Happy to be here. Uh, so for those who maybe aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about your ministry context, what you're working on right now. Uh, I am south of Denver, Castle Rock, Colorado. Okay. So I got originally out of the seminary, you get assigned. So I got assigned to start a church outside of Seattle. We're there eight years, and then 2010 came to start a church in Castle Rock. So now we're kind of functioning in that world, uh, moving forward with that. Yeah, that's excellent. And you guys have been going there um, for of, a while. Right, right. End of 2011 is when our first service was. So you usually spend about a year kind of getting to know the community, understand yeah. some things. And then uh, now we just shifted about a year ago into a building, which is a big deal. We okay. set up, did set up takedown oh, cool. for yeah. 300 plus times, school, 350, right? yeah. Yeah. 350 yeah. times or so, and then... You got really good, good at well. that. <laughs> we were efficient. I would say that. I, I liked it because there's people. You just see people volunteer, and then yeah. they're, and they see purpose to what they're doing. It kind of yeah. immediate. If they don't set yeah. up, then there's yeah. no, there's no church. So that was pretty That's clear. That's true. Right? Yeah, you're sitting on the floor yeah, exactly. in the cafeteria. Exactly. <laughs> the chairs were set up. That's the only thing we didn't do. But everything else we had to we had to provide. Well, excellent. And you're presenting here at Men of His Word. That's exactly right. So what's your big takeaway? The big idea you want people walking away with today? I, they asked me to speak on something in particular. I oh, thought I got okay. to pick, so that was my trick. So they said, "If the world hates you," which I thought was the theme of the whole conference. Yeah, so I thought it's this, not. It's no, it's not at all. <laughs> and I totally misread the email. I spent like like a week brainstorming, and I sent yeah. them two topics. I'm like, either of these would be really good. One was like on Sabbath rest. I thought this would be good. Yeah. I can't okay. remember the other one. And then they said, "No, will you speak on if the world hates you?" I'm like, "Wow, okay." <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I sp- brainstormed that a little bit. And the challenge with that is because uh, Jesus right in that section, we're talking about John, uh, and Jesus right in that section promises that if you love me, basically, you're going to be persecuted. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I started to talk to people, and no one's really persecuted. Okay. Uh, no one has examples. I mean, around the world there are, but there's yeah, no none yeah. of us are afraid to like be at this conference. We're not afraid to do that. So you yeah, look into that yeah. a little bit more. Police aren't going to storm in, no. storm through the doors and arrest everybody they yeah, see. Yeah, so we've got a couple dilemmas. One is that persecution really drives a closeness in the church and a yeah. kind of a fire it through the Holy Spirit, of course, that makes that happen. So that's gone. And really what we're finding is when you hate, love and hate are very similar, but not opposites. And the world mm. is really apathetic, I would say. Mm. So the opposite of love apathy and so the world doesn't care what we think it's kind of and i use that phrase okay boomer that came out but it's now it's kind of okay christian we don't really care what we marginalized exactly and so that causes us to be frustrated and now we have to kind of reinvent our role when we don't have that kind of sense of influence and power of the christian message and christian worldview so it's recognizing just how we as individuals can kind of get past that and jesus calls us to love our neighbor um by seeing his best uh seeing what's best for them and mm-hmm. so i think that has changed for us and this is getting a long answer but the, the gist right. of it gist of it is getting to um, love and see people like jesus saw them which means you care about their best interests which means ultimately you're sharing your faith even at your own cost yeah yeah what do you see as wh- what have people shared with you what is the cost of sharing being open about your faith because that's really what we're talking about in this podcast is how to sh- how to live your faith out loud right exactly what are some of those costs that you've seen in the american context well i think the cost is we we just don't do it because people don't care okay right so i mean if you see response and i would say that right if you lift weights and you get bigger you're yeah. going to keep doing yeah. that but if you right. see no response and i think that's the struggle what people have is when people don't care about their message and they're not even they don't even care enough to argue yeah <laughs> they sometimes like they're just yeah. like whatever you believe that i believe this yeah. and i think it's really easy to give up so the cost in that sense is um internal being demoralized because people don't mm. want to listen to your message you mm-hmm. lose motivation to be trying to do that and it's trying to somehow look past that to say there really is a god there really is a hell there really is um i, I mean there's real stuff outside of these things that we can see and trying to come to people with a the importance of that jesus really matters yeah excellent yeah, that uh, sounds like an exciting uh, presentation. Hopefully, uh, you're getting lots of people listening to it because I think that's a big issue in America. It went especially well. as we read, hear about like the church in China or Pakistan or Afghanistan. You're like, oh, that's uh, or Iraq. You know, Ooh, right. those guys are doing it. They're facing persecution, and it can feel like I don't face that exactly, but I right. face something, and I don't know how to deal with it. Right. Uh, so it's a good conversation to have. It was. It seemed to go pretty well. I had a good dialogue with the people there, and good. I think many probably came in thinking. You know, the world's changed. You think about, like, the bakers who, because uh, their stance sure. on yeah. marriage and things, they can't. It, that That's how we view persecution in reality. They, they all recognize this, the work they feel like silence to some degree. Yeah. And yeah. it's just a whole different thing of kind of, that's 
we're just in a different era and, yeah. and recognize that people don't come from the same assumptions that we do and kind of have to start from ground zero when you're yeah. talking and witnessing to people because yeah. they don't have the, the same kind of back knowledge or backstory. Mm-hmm. So if our folks want to find out more about what you're working on, want to ask questions about this topic, where they, can they find you? Where can they reach you? Uh, there's a couple different places. We've got a blog, jaredoldenberg.com, which sounds kind of vain right there, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no one else had it. And, uh, I don't write on there too often. And then also involved with Time of Grace Ministries. They have Grace Talks so I'm yeah. involved in that, one of their presenters on that for online devotions and things like that. But also our website, just through the church, will be there a while, so eternalrock.org. Okay. Uh, and always reach out. People got questions, and I yeah. can connect them at least to a good spot to start that dialogue with people. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time. Happy to be here. Yeah.